in this short video i'm going to talk about variables in perl uh, it's a very quick introduction where i'll talk about different types of variables that perl supports fundamentally perl has just three types of variables we talk about scalars arrays and hashes so as you can see on the screen that i've shared i have represented what scalar variables are in the comments here i said scalar variables they start with a dollar sign a dollar sigil that you see here uh, here's an example where i said dollar name is equal to stimuler which is a string dollar score is equal to 85 which is, an, which is a number an integeral number and you can also see dollar rating which is 8.5 which again is a floating point number primarily i would say that scalars are used for representing numbers and strings though you can have scalars to represent what we call as references i'll talk about references in the further tutorial so if you do like to like me to talk to you about references please do comment and let me know i can make a video for that all right now i'm printing all these variable values right in here within a double quoted string you can represent these scalar variables as they are and their values are substituted in place we call this as the variable interpolation arrays on the other hand they start with the at the rate sign the at symbol right and um, they're mostly used for representing an ordered collection of data and the data is primarily scalar um, arrays in Perl are not like arrays in other languages like C++ or Java or even C uh, arrays in those static related languages are generally meant for representing homogeneous data when I say homogeneous that means you create an integer array which can only hold integeral values you can also have a floating point array which can hold just float values you can have a character array which we sometimes treat as strings right um, if you come from C background a string is nothing but a character array that's how you see it as well in Perl arrays are heter heterogeneous when I say heterogeneous that actually means that you can store values of different types which means that you can have the first element as a string second element as a number third element as a float so you can have different types but here's the thing though we say different types uh, like strings and numbers in reality it's a it's a scalar right arrays represent scalar so it's an ordered collection of scalar you cannot hold an array inside an array we'll see what happens when you do that and uh, arrays are generally initialized by assigning a list to them so when you see data which is shown in parentheses in Perl, this is a list let me tell you that list is more like an expression it's a way to express a bunch of data a collection of data as an expression you assign it a variable and the variable is actually called as an array so there is a subtle difference between list and array in Perl. in some languages you don't see that as a difference but you can see there are certain expressions that work on list they don't work on arrays there are some expressions that work purely on arrays they don't work on list right so that's the difference that you see here so i said your dollar at the rate user is equal to this and uh, when i try to print them to access these elements you access by based on their indices you can say dollar user of zero dollar user of one or dollar user of two and you can also note that i'm using the square bracket for subscripting this is what makes it an array so when you see a subscript with a square bracket with the dollar sigil before it what you're trying to represent is a scalar from within a user array right hashes on the other hand are created with a percent sigil so when I say percent that means I guess you know see this is this character right and um, they are used for representing an ordered collection of key value mapping so what you call as hash maps uh, in some languages or maps in general or you call them as associative arrays in some other languages or you might simply call it as dictionaries in languages like python so here you call them as hashes so hashes are also created by assigning a list to them let me tell you though you can see special special symbols like equal to greater than equal to greater than in here uh, there's just a synonym for comma so you could just assign a list to a hash and to access the elements of a hash you access them based on the key the key that you represent with curly braces